Hi everyone, this is the lesson recap for March 17th, Tuesday for year nine. Uh, a reminder about the upcoming due date, now it's a quick one. Uh, developing ideas is due March 23rd, now I'm recording this on March 18th, Wednesday, so that, this is due next Monday, 6 p.m., uploaded to Manage Back. And there is not a lot of work in here, guys, uh, so I, know, I understand you have a lot of other subjects to do and a lot of work to do, but we've tried to prune this back a little bit uh, from what we normally do in robotics. So today we'll talk about, uh, we'll start the developing ideas. So you've finished inquiring and analyzing, you have some understanding of the problem you're trying to solve, and now it's time to start designing the solution to it. And the first step to do that is to create a design specification. This is a detailed list of the features that your product will, in will include. Again, features from the user's point of view. And then we'll talk about uh, how to create some design ideas. So let's look at the spec. Now for those of you that have had Scratch in your 7, JRU in your 8, let's see where is the design spec, uh, this should be familiar to you. So here you're going to specify, I'm just zooming in a little bit, you're going to specify the design specifications of your application. Now it says design specifications. There really is one spec, and that spec is a list of the features for your product. So we have a specification down here, and there'll be 10 items. Each item is a feature that the product will include. So the specification is a collection of features. And you should include at least 10 product features. Again, from the user point of view. What will the user see? What will the user get to do when they use your product? So table 1.1 one, one here is a partial example of a design spec for a POS, point of sale application. Uh, give the user the uh, in a nutshell, it gives the user gives the user a, the charge for products they want to purchase. So, and again, this is just a sample. Don't uh, just copy this and use it as your own, and don't modify it. But it, it should steer you in the right direction. So, for example, um, the application will run in a terminal console. Okay, that's a feature. Uh, the program will have a text-based menu system. The application will display a product menu and the price of each item. Notice this, this is describing what the user can see and what the user can do. The program will allow the user to select a product they want to purchase. The program will prompt the user for the quantity, quantity of the product. When the user is finished selecting the products, the program will display the total charge. So, uh, and then, so that is the feature. Those are the features. And here is some additional details. For example, the first one, it's running in a terminal window. So the application will use a TUI, text-based user interface, not a graphical user interface. Now, by terminal window, I'm referring to this guy over here. Now, I'm just going to clear that screen. This is the terminal window, and we'll talk later, and in fact, there is a screencast on how to execute your program, how to compile and execute your program in this terminal window. Now, while you're doing development, you're living over here in online GDB. Now, this window down here is the terminal window. Now, if I just draw this, if I run this program, you'll see this will go black, and this is the terminal window. Now, their terminal window is 24 rows by 80 columns. This is just the program I wrote using N cursors to demonstrate the size of the, the terminal in this environment. Now, this black space over here is really not, is not available to you, nor is this down here. Okay, then. So, just some clarification on what we mean by terminal. So this is uh, not too difficult, fairly straightforward. Um, 
Again, if you've had Scratch and Deru, you've seen this before. Now for design ideas, uh, we've created three steps here. So step one is you're going to create a, your first iteration of your design. Then you receive teacher feedback. Then you incorporate that feedback into your design. Now, what form will your design take? Well, again, to simplify things, we're going to use a flowchart. This will visually represent the flow of control through your application. So uh, you're going to illustrate the flow through the application. This will focus on the user experience. What will the user see as they use your application? Now, for this, you can use a flowchart or a story storyboard. Now, uh, keep in mind, um, since we don't have a lot of time to do this, a proper design would also include the design of the software that's going to implement these features. And there would be pseudocode written to uh, uh, describe the algorithms you're going to use. Now, let's see. No, we don't talk about that. Yeah, so, uh, again, that's a... Uh, constraint, time, due to a time constraint here. So let's focus on the flow chart. Now, if you're in class, we watch this uh, short video. Now, you, those of you that are watching this screencast, when you watch this, you can stop this, this uh, video at about 2 minutes 30 seconds, because beyond that point, it gets into detail which you don't need to be concerned with. Um, yeah, I guess we could, I could play it now, and you could watch this. Um, I'm debating what I should. Let me think about that uh, while I carry on. All right, now you're going to create the flowchart, and I'll show you an example from year seven, which I think is useful even for year nine. And then you'll get feedback from the teacher and record the feed feedback that you receive. Okay, where are you going to record it? In your design folder document. The flowchart will be scanned and it's inserted into your DF. Then you record the feedback, and then you will incorporate the feedback uh, onto the storyboard, or you can use this, sorry, onto the flowchart or the storyboard. Note that you may need to update your design spec at this point. So if in doing this, you discovered that, oh, hey, you know, I left something out of my spec, or I want to remove something from my spec, the spec should be kept up to date, and you can do that by making changes back in the original specification. Uh, and just do that in red. Now, let's just take a look at the... Um, in lieu of watching the video, which is going to make this file huge, I just want to uh, show you what we prepared for the year 7s. So here is a flowchart, and uh, they're creating a scratch game. So in their case, they would have some kind of home screen. This is what the user would see when they first open the application. There would be a play button and an instruction button there. And decisions can be made. For example, is the play button pressed? Well, it is. So we, now we show this screen. And then the user makes choices from this screen, and there's some navigation to other um, screens along the way, level 1, level 2, level 3. If they press the quit button, they come down here and end the program. Now note, um, there are two ways to reach this point. One is I just quit before I perform any of the any activities in each level, or I go into one of the levels and I complete a level, and then it asks, uh, do I want to continue or do I want to exit the program, and I can exit going this way. Now note, there are really only three uh, symbols you need when creating the flowchart. In proper industrial strength flowchart, there are dozens of symbols. You can keep it simple. The ovals are for the start and end point of the flow. The square boxes are some sort of process or view of the application. And the diamonds are decisions, where the user has a choice. Now, typically, there's a a single entry into the decision diamond and two exits, one for yes and one for no. Now in this case, uh, we just try to keep it simple uh, for the year seven. So if the, if, if the answer is yes, they carry on. If the answer is no, well, they just 
don't go, they don't leave this. So you'll see all three of these symbols and many more in that video. Um, so let's go back to here. Yeah, and that's about it. Um, now back to the lessons page. Um, so your homework is try and complete these two items and then when we have class on Thursday the 19th we will go on to the next two stages of developing ideas. Alright, that's it for now everyone and uh, we will see you on Thursday the 19th. Cheerio!